Welcome back to Pirate Adventures. Where we last left off, our dear pirates accepted their boons from Brimmy and proceeded to go on to what they are, or what they believe to be, possibly their most ferocious fight yet. In the search for what they believe to be the Jolly Roger, Roger Reginald's famous ship. They begin their approach of the island of Yew at the swamp. This strange triangular swamp that looks almost man-made, but not quite. However, in their search, they are somewhat discovered. A telepathic link, a communication made, and as done so, a rolling mist onto the environment. So, my pirates, you were last requested to follow the path north. The mist has rolled in, giving you that guidance. But, Tim has seen some kind of soul in the swamp deep. Have a signal. Some kind of a life force energy. So I ask, what would you all like to do? How far is the soul? You can't quite gauge the distance. It is oh. deep within the swamp. Mm. Very deep. It, it, it's not something that you feel that even if you all touched hand to foot with one of you at the top could yeah. reach. And if we wander it's... into that fog, we're immediately going to get snatched up. So I'm willing to let it go. And th that link was telepathic, wasn't it? There was. Okay, so we have no idea. All right. What what's going on here? Where's this mist coming from? And is it just me, or is this giving us a path in a very specific direction? Hags over there, up mm. the path. Might as well meet the inevitable. Hmm. A little bit concerning, but sure. Don't like we got what, what, what what's going to happen if we end well, I suppose there's no point entering this mist <clears throat> did we try to dispel the mist already I don't uh, think so no I don't believe you do you no you have not you said it wasn't harmful though no it's just going to make it really it's just, just really dense yeah, right? no, appear yeah. harmful it doesn't appear to be harmful in any way shape or form I don't know why you guys are laughing I'm just being frank you know <laughs> do we do we just it's 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 thick white. You can't even we can't even see through it. It is really blocking most of your vision. You could probably just make out about How... twenty feet further into it from your point. Like if you were to step into it, you could probably make out about twenty feet further before you're just met with a wall of ob. Uh, Oh god, what's the opposite of translucent? Opaque. What? Opaque, thank you. Completely opaque, like white, cold fog. Right, so there's no <clears> point. <throat> okay, well, mm. I guess we don't really have any other options unless someone's got a giant, I guess, fan with them. <laughs> there's not a lot we can really do. You're uh, the one with the wings. There's yes. a gust of wind spell, isn't there? I'm not going to waste is, my wings on, on, you know. Probably gonna probably gonna need that later, if anything. I mean that's a very good point. There is a gust of wind spell. There is a gust of spell, but I don't know if anyone has it. I don't think anyone... I definitely don't know it. I do not know it. Every consumer you brought was a melee fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to hire more wizards. Yeah. We are. Let's nice have some utility. The reason why we didn't get wizards because we're all squishy. That's true. That is very true. We did we did specifically seek out, you know, mm. more melee based fighters. Maybe next time we can look for more of the arcane yeah. persuasion. Because at the moment, and last it's... time we had Terran with us, and he just <laughs> let us sleep. Yeah, he's so... a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was quite that was quite unfortunate. Maybe we, we need should... to hire better wizards. But we need, we need <laughs> it's almost, it is almost like the squishy <laughs> wizard fell asleep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The squishy wizard. Yeah. Yes, maybe we should have some backups. Well, you know, maybe next time we can, you know, Alarius can 
speak to them all wizardly like and they may maybe they'll yep. join no? we should have a wizard interview a wizard training mm -hmm. it That's could be a training handshake. program sure sure i don't you know mm. reading your books and what have you but yes uh well an initiation a standard we keep a standard of who we hire no no, no more squishy trying to fall asleep wizards agreed does that mean you're off the table then, Alaris? <laughs> no, no, We're no. allowed one. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, yeah, present party. I mean, you're looking, not... you're looking a bit more like sturdy nowadays, but still, it's just not, you know, not quite He's got there. Got some meat on his bones. Yeah, a little bit. You know. I mean, I just got the armor from Brimmy. Oh, that that helps. Gonna ba bounce a little damage true. back. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, all right. Yes. Yeah. In let's... any case, we just stick together. Yeah. I said that's might as well head over. Be on guard. Mm -hmm keep your wits about you who i mean we can't see in this mist who knows what could be lurking in there ready to jump out at us so keep alert and she will lead the crew through this mist to whatever place it's in you know with elizora next to her because elizora seems to know what's going on naturally okay. naturally as you begin to walk up the path there is a dead quiet only hearing their own, your own footsteps as they at first walk against grass then mud grass again and eventually find yourself here you could all go onto the battle map please it is the dead of night burningly hot Good. The mist here seems to have settled lower, so you can kind of see over it, but generally speaking, it's probably up to your shoulders. I uh, can't remember who's tallest. For Tim, it's probably up to your nose, mm. you're the shortest, but for most of you, it's up to sort of your uh, chest and shoulders kind of area, and it is spanning the entire surface of land and seems to really collate and get stronger over the water you're in some kind of floodplain area where there's plenty of dips in the earth to just have these parts of you could be near the ocean you could be too far away and it could be part of a lake some perhaps or a pond but there's so much mist you can't really tell how far into the island or out of the island you actually are but the level in this general area is low, so you can see around you. But it is the dead of night, and there is no moon tonight to give you any dim light. Um, <clears throat> uh, but to give some light, because she already knows we're coming. Mm -hmm. uh, I can use light too. Vela my animated can, shield. Yep, Vela will use light on her rapier to make it a little light yeah, stick. Yeah, I'll do the same. Okay. What's the bright light? What's the dim light? It is bright light in twenty foot, dim light for an additional twenty foot. Okay. So, Tim, are you also putting the light on? Yes, your please. Stuff? I'm gonna put it on my animated shield. Okay. Quick update. Now you both have light on you. Nice. As you sort of cast light on yourself, there's almost like a, a repulse with the mist. And then it settles back in around you. <clears throat> I suppose we just should expect everything to be unsettling around here. Well, I guess there's nothing for it. Let's let's head on over. Uh, we bring the Kenshimans to the door. I mean, I think. Or I'm... should we leave them in a bush or something? Or we can. Well, <laughs> the bush. <laughs> we can try, but to be honest, I think she already knows we're all here. Yeah. Yeah. There's no hand from Paraz. For sure, I just I, I don't want us all to get immediately fireballed and. Yeah. We don't need all go in one group, but no? we should all go. Well, we we yeah. could all, we could all go, and then the, yeah. everyone else follows behind us. By a good as a say, wizard, I should say we should give a good forty feet. You know, okay. I think something more than thirty within feet. the light. Yes, yes, yes. Or maybe try, should... try not to blockade any doorway. Oh, yes. Just to fire through. Yes, yes, yes. 
Yeah, so when if you do turn into something large, you know, it's so available. Go ahead. And yeah, we basically start walk, walking towards um, walking towards the door. I'm just moving ever so slowly, slowly, just in case. Uh... <laughs> That's okay. You take your time. As you get to this point, the Kenshims are with us, by the way. At this point. Yeah, yeah, they're all. Yeah, right. you stay yeah, no, I, I didn't. I, I didn't want to immediately pick tokens for them, depending on what you guys did. I wasn't sure if you were going to have them split off or what. Mm -hmm. What is this? It rock. seems to be a very large rock. Oh, okay. But it's it is strange, Vela. It's not surprising when it catches your eye because this is not a place you would expect a large rock to have appeared. Actually, the ground kind of is a weird mix of grass and moss and stone. Maybe you are closer to the ocean. It seems more like it would be the edge of an island than the middle. And I assume I can't hear the water from here. There is a strange silence. Mm -hmm. No critters. And seemingly no critters. It is, it is like you're in a sound-proofed room. It is as if someone has cast the spell of silence on you, but you are still all able to communicate with each other. And we can use magic, because we tried. And you have used magic capably. Mm. All right, Hag, come on out. Oh, hello, dearie. So glad you could be here. I'm just in the next room. Come on, when you come, we can have a nice cup of tea. Sure. Speaking of which, oh, when you go in. to open the door, Elizora, the door opens for you. Both of them. Of course. Yeah. Elizora doesn't even try to open, like pretend she's going to open the door. Uh, are the Kenshimans coming in with us? It is a little bit cramped, dearie. You might want to leave a couple outside. No, Your it's choice. all coming in. <laughs> Pack in tight. <laughs> shoulder to shoulder and more is the bear. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, at least we can have the Kenshimen sort of Kenshimen's waiting outside at least. Because again, if they need to come rushing in, they can. Because, yeah, having eight people in this one tiny ass room is probably not. More's the bear, Vela. Everybody's got to cram in here and see the sights for themselves. Mm. Okay. Oh. Let's come on. Let's all scooch in. Come on. Scoochy, scoochy in. Maybe we could leave them out in the porch. Or at least the entrance. No, if, like if everybody's got to come in. Yeah, if we, if we if we come in, they can they can be like near the door area. So at least they're not like right next to us, I guess. It would be rude to let it have some people outside. Are you are you going to come this close to her? Yes, she's literally trying to squeeze in to allow everyone in. Okay. To illustrate her point. She kind of as as you're coming in, she kind of reaches out a hand to guide you closer. <laughs> Up to you if you take it. No. Okay. By the way, the visage before you is not quite like the token. It is an old woman and she has her hair tied up in a bun, blue eyes, wrinkles just around her cheeks, and uh, the old crow's feet and she is generally wearing knitwear around her shoulders very like grandma's house vibes <laughs> she is buttoned up cozy and she looks at all of you and just goes well dearies been a while since I've had company Tell me, who would like a cup of tea? I'm having one. Sure. I would, uh, uh thank you for your hospitality. Uh, Excellent. She I... just flicks a finger and you hear, a, like, a stove kind of thing turn on and a kettle over the top. Nice. Well, introductions. 
Uh, I am Captain Vela. This here is my... Oh, a captain! Yes. She kind of does like an, a creaked curtsy. Oh, I think it is. Um, uh, this here is my first mate, Elazora. Uh, over there is our our uh, doctor, uh, uh, Tim, and yeah. our and our botswain. Yeah, he's a botswain. Uh, Alarius um, and a couple of other other and some of my other crewmates. More than so a couple. A few crewmates. Oh, yeah. Some. Four more of our new crewmate who we've made recent friends. Am yes. I standing next to a giant cage, Arthur? Yes. Is there anything in the cage? Would you like to do a perception check? <laughs> I'm standing right next to it. <laughs> Not yeah. yet. Would you like to do a perception check? <laughs> I guess. Roll me a perception check, please. But yeah, I imagine if the, when the Kenshimas come in, they'll probably just like line this back door. The back back wall. <sighs> 19. Okay. Mm. What you see in the cage, it is skeletal. But it is not human. It looks like humanoid. It's, it's not human, so it looks like it could be some kind of boar, perhaps. Uh, there is no flesh on the bone anymore. It has very much been a skeleton for a long while, okay. either picked clean or cleaned by someone. Okay. Oh, don't mind that, dearie. That's just for a potion later. So, um, I'll be. I'll be... I'll obviously let you know who uh, we are. Who, uh, who do we, uh, who are we addressing? Oh, I'm known by many names. You, you could call me uh, Nana, if you'd like. I'd rather not. <laughs> mm. What about Delacroix? Very nice name. Thank you. So an old one of mine. I like to cycle through when you've had as many lives as I have. Now, the tea, I believe, is going to be ready in a moment. Who wanted one? Quick show of hands. Will put a hand up? No, thank you. I will leave this to you. Do no, any of the consumers put their hand up? Okay. Um. Who? So why not? Have like two of them. Yeah, have None. Yeah, have <laughs> Wait, where well, did you drink the tea? I'll, what I'll, are you I'll, doing? I'll, 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 I could see who. What's his name? Uh, I could. I could see Cormag doing it because he's like elderly. And and Argyle. I'll, I'll have one. That sounds great. And I and, 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 and Argyle's so like, I'd imagine that he's quite laid back, so he probably would just go like, yeah. Yeah, I'll take a cup of tea. Sounds nice. You can't read the situation. No, exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, so she begins to pour cups of tea, and this, it looks like fairly nice, fine china that she's pouring it in, stuff that she's had for a long time. There seems to be some kind of crest on it, none of you really recognize, and she brings it out and passes you a cup with a saucer. Baylor then goes to the allies that had their hands up and did this, does the same, and then she settles back and just says, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get you any chairs. And she just flicks her fingers and then chairs apparate out of the floor. And one apparates behind her, a bit more of a rocking chair style, and she just sits back and gets comfortable. I don't sit. Would you like to sit down? It's very comfortable. No. Available sit. She's trying to be. She's trying to be like polite in her own. You know, in this person's house. Mm. Now, looks like some of you don't quite know your manners. If you're in someone's house as a guest, I would expect you to treat them with respect. Oh, you have. You have. You have to excuse him. He's a. Uh, he's an. It's he... my. Uh, it's my shell. I have trouble sitting. Oh. Would you prefer a stool? Mm, I wouldn't have to sit on a stool too. I would, I'd, I'd much rather stand. 
Mm. You see, sometimes he he'll fall off a stool and, and then he ends up on his back and then it's a whole <laughs> it's a whole situation. It's not very mm. pleasant. So we just kind I'd of rather not talk about we, it. We avoid those situations wherever possible. You see. Oh dearie, I didn't mean to make any offence. It's okay. He's a turtle, you know. Not not everyone's so accustomed to turtles. It's something we've had to learn, you know, with us since our time together. I'm so sorry, dearie. I I, I won't pry. She starts sipping her tea. Biscuit? Uh, she kind of waves her hands and then um, floating is like an open bowl of biscuits. They look like they might be like oat kind of cookies. Oh, man. Oh, if it was short for instance. struggling. <laughs> yeah, she'll, she'll take one, you know, dip it in the tea. She hasn't had any of the tea, but she'll, she'll dip it in the tea. Dip it in the tea. Yeah, I like yeah. that. You know, like how when you when you're when you're when you're somewhere and you don't want to have the thing, but you're just like flapping with it. Yeah, you know? you, you you fiddle with it until yeah, you yeah. don't you can get up and leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what's happening. Oh no, I suppose I should ask. Hey, have you come to my island? Um, is it by accident, or perhaps you're looking for someone, something? No, a fair few people that have lost people around here. It's a damn shame. Uh, can I give her a quick vibe check? You wanna, you wanna insight her? What you, to. what you looking for in particular? Intent. I got an eighteen. Eighteen. She is curious. She is, she is prodding for information. You say that you've lived many lifetimes. Um, which you know, you don't look like you have. You know, you've, you've, you've oh, done very, you've done you, very, you've done very well. It's very kind. So you're probably obviously aware. Of how, how wait? How long was the flood? A flood was like a few hundred. It's a hundred something years ago, right? Seven no, seven hundred. Seven hundred. She might not be. Seven hundred years ago, to be exact. Um, fair enough. So, obviously, you know, we all know how the flood, the flood happened originally. Aye. Mm-hmm. Well, Jaw Neptia went mad, that's right. Yes. Well, it turns out um, it's going to happen again. No. Yeah. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to acquire the means of preventing it again. Because, let's face it, nobody nobody wants a second flood. And I mean, I don't know about you, but we can't breathe underwater. Well, actually, he can breathe underwater, and so can she. But most of us can't breathe underwater. Ooh. Um, so we're trying to we're trying to prevent such a thing from happening. She... I see. Mm. So you're heroes then. We're what? Sorry. You're heroes. Oh, some somewhat, somewhat. You can be. Oh, the I mean, <laughs> you know, We don't. We don't. <laughs> we don't. They are like <laughs> blushing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We don't, we don't, we don't we try not to label things like that. You see, we're we're just hum we're you know, we're humble uh, a a adventurers that are trying to just you know prevent bad think bad bad situation from getting worse. You see. No. Now. So do you want my help? Um, I potentially yes. Um, now hey, okay. the way we have be we have come to understand of how to prevent it is gathering certain items of great power. Eat? Okay. How does she, can it, before she carries on, can she just, she wants to do a kind of an insight on how she's reacted to that. Because, Go ahead. obviously, she must know, you know. So has she become more guarded, aggressive, defend, you know, defensive, um. what have you? Guidance. Okay. Are you close enough for guidance? You're on the other side of the table. Oh, um, I'm going to reach over and take a biscuit and then also touch. <laughs> Can I do that? <laughs> i tell you what. I, I will, if, if we swap Mate, Ella's, if we swap move Ella's aura and Vela I'm, I'm, I can around. Move I can move into the yeah. square. Yeah, yeah, just swap Vela yeah, and... Tim, Tim, like, Tim like clambers over the table towards yeah. the biscuits. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. 
look at this. Just tap a hand while you grabs a fistful and, and tries to softly tap. I'm, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna just give you that. That's, that's it. like I like it. In... How do the biscuits taste? Of interest. She has an you eating one. Yeah, I am. No, Excellent. Oh, Vela didn't eat hers. Just so you know. Um, Tim, they are delicious. <laughs> they are, they are frightfully delicious. Mm -hmm. You could probably have another ten. Wow. Uh, he pockets the rest. He took a fistful. No, I mean, Tim, you you want them now? Oh no. no. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> like you 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 you'd really like another biscuit the minute that one finishes. Um. Tim tries to resist the temptation. Roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. Of course. So while you're doing all that, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a seventeen. You eat at least one more biscuit. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what you probably get is you eat one more biscuit, and then after that you're like, oh no, no, no more, no. Nope. But he keeps the ones in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Unnatural twenty. Unnatural that 20. guidance was great. Got a four on it. He, he, she is not quite. When you say items of power, she doesn't, she doesn't flinch. There's no change in her demeanor okay. in any way, shape, or form. I was looking for like a dot connection kind of thing, but that's fine. Yeah, but there's no like, no reaction, realization, or, or particular reaction to what you're saying. All right. Whether it's because she's not quite sure what you're talking about, or she already knew exactly what you're looking for, or what you're not sure. Okay, we the hag's bottle isn't called anything else, is it? It is just called the hag's bottle. It is called the hag's bottle. Okay, so it's not just called the hag's bottle because she has it. Because I don't, because I don't want to unintentionally in, call her a hag. <laughs> you know, in, 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 in all in all <laughs> reference literature around the artifacts, right. the hag's bottle is always referred to as the hags bottle whether or not that was its initial name right 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 i'll try and i'll try and skirt around it all right so that's what so these items of power is what brought us here we believe such an item is located somewhere on this island Ooh. now wow. we're not we're not saying that you have it but it's just somewhere on this island you obviously seem to be very well accustomed knowledgeable of this island um, what we are looking for is it basically it, it's a bottle of some description um, Elizora here is our resident expert of these items so she'll be, able, right. be able to explain what the bottle is potentially uh, I don't know the one I spoke to aren't you how can I tell oh I just know about people so this bottle, then. Hmm. What do you want to do with it? Destroy it. Destroy it. Oh, uh, do you now? Yeah, yeah. Cast it away into the abyss. We believe it's these items that are going to cause the second flood. We believe that Juneptia is likely to reuse them because she used them originally to cause the flood. I she did. So we basically, if by getting rid of them, we prevent a second flood from occurring. It makes sense. Although, actually, I should probably correct you. She didn't use them to make the flood happen. Oh. I assume, no. I, I, assume I got that right. I haven't made that up. That is what no, we you believe. Haven't, you, you haven't made that up. That's exactly what you believe. Okay, that's fine. Just want just to make sure I didn't... I didn't I didn't screw that that's, up. That's the story we've all been that's told. Fine. That's fine, that's fine. I'm, good. I'm glad I remember that right. Okay, sorry. No, no, no. She, she didn't use them to make the flood. That's oh. how she escaped. Escaped what, exactly? Banishment. She was in for a right shit time, but she found her way around it. There are certain things gods can do. And they'll entrust items, offspawn, whatever, 
to the material world where the gods can't quite touch like they used to be able to. So you're not wrong, they're part of her, her power, but she didn't use them to cause the flood. She caused the flood all on her own. No, not quite on her own, but you know, it was her idea. Who helped her if it was not done on her own? Oh, that's not for me to tell. So I was waiting for her to say me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. No um, way. There's, there's, there was lots of little steps to the make the last flood. I remember quite correctly. And then the gods got very angry, and she was to be banished, serving on the navy. But then she escaped. Bit like some of the old deities did. Not quite themselves as they were before. They turned themselves into something different to escape destruction. Do you know much about that kind of thing? Um, personally, not really. Is this Don't any... you? Uh, do you know anything? Aren't else? you angel touched? She, she, she shuffles uncomfortably. Um, oh, come now. You must know what I'm talking about. You've all seen her do the angel thing, right? Yes, well, everyone has a past they don't like talking about. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pray. It's fine. I didn't want to make you uncomfortable. That's okay. Um, but yes, essentially, sure. But um, I don't see what that really has to do with with this. Well, it's how it's the same way they kind of survive. No, no deities to take mortal form to survive these things. I've known them to hide themselves in items and some kind of imprisonment just to be released right at the right time. Sometimes they give their power to their children so that they can live on and do prosperous things with it, or whatever else. But all in all, it's an escape plan. So what you're insinuating is that, potentially, these items that we are looking for could be deities in an item to provide, to hide essentially. Or oh, these are pieces of Geneptia? This, this is the thing about items, as you Good. put it forward. A god's power is pretty godly. So for that respect, you can't fit it all into one item. You have to use several. Are the gods stronger? More items. Oh. So it's basically what, as that. basically what Tim's saying then. So these items that we're collecting are all sections and fragments of Joneptia's power. Makes the most sense to me. Well, mm. all the more so reason... changes nothing. We still want them no. destroyed. Yeah, all the more reason to destroy them, then. If we destroy them, she has less power. Aye, it just depends who's doing the destroying, really. Don't it? Yes. We have... means, don't we, Elizora? Absolutely. Means. It's so great to hear all these memes that people so rightfully put forward. Tell me, how much do you know about your memes? Have they told you? I don't know. <laughs> oh, the ignorance of youth. <laughs> how did you survive so long? How did you survive the flood? Same way a lot of people survive. Do things that wish they didn't have to. Made choices. And then I... Maybe had to make two rather large sacrifices. But it was worth it in the end. A coven. Okay. Do you... 
It sounds. It Could sounds you just like. Give it's... me a moment, dearie. I'm just going to get another cup of tea. Okay. That's <laughs> 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 one way to do it. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that. Uh, yeah. Because all. Yeah. Because all we really know is that Elizora, I what handed over to her patron. Right. He has and her friend the, and, on the other side. Yeah, and the patron, in theory, is disposing of it, which it sounds like. What what she's insinuating is that they're taking it and adding it to their own power. We have, I'm guessing we have we're gathering no... them to bring Geneptia back. Well, but I mean, if they're just fragments of power, right? I mean, it would make. I thought they were fragments of Geneptia, like Horcruxes. I don't know. There's a lot of assumptions there. Apparently. I think uh, it's, 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 it sounds like it, I mean, mm. it sounds like they like they pour had their like power into it, like just mm. like enchantments or whatever. Um... Which then, if someone else can extract, could potentially add. But then we don't know. That's a, some. That's that's a lot of. I mean, who know? You know, there's no reason to believe what this person's saying either. But yeah, uh, I guess better the devil we know. Well, we don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> we know probably know her better than uh, we do Elizora's patron. We, we, yeah. we tangentially know. <laughs> Elizora, Elizora is, has been truthful the whole time in saying that she would always pass on the artifacts to her friend on the other side who would destroy them. Mm -hmm. That's how they get rid of. She never, no one's ever, no one has ever asked for further clarification or anything more in depth of. She passes them over to the friend on the other side. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm like a true lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fair. That's, that's the whole, and then, and then Elizora also said to Tim that she passed over the pistol to her friend on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I guess that I. But I'm assuming there's. What she wished. Yeah, uh, but I'm assuming there's no proof, right? You're just given their word. But I didn't say that. Okay, fine. We're asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, ask, asking, I see first class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. different question. <laughs> I, I'm always <laughs> worried to ask it. I see. <laughs> she comes back and sits down with her extra cup of tea. Start sipping again. <laughs> Seth? So, what did you think would happen exactly? Did you think you'd come here, find this bottle that you're looking for, and then go find the other artifacts, and then just destroy them all? Them. Exactly. Just, right. Wait, so what do you think happens when you destroy something that was made by a god? How are the other Kinchimans looking? That the ones, had to that, uh, the ones that had to say, I'm fine. For now, I they, might feel until, fine. They, until they turn on us. <laughs> have they, like, been. Have they, have they only drank and drunk the one tea? Have they drunk multiple? They've only had one tea so far. Cool Mag has dug into the biscuits and he's oh, no. digging deep. I bet. Um, well, to be honest, it's not something I particularly thought, thought about. It wasn't really my 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 area. You see, I kind of left that over to uh, Elizora as our expert. But it's, all I'm all I can do, you know, us uh, us lowly mortals. Is go based on the legends and the stories that we have. Okay, so let's just see. I like all of you. You, pointing at you, Bailey, were particularly polite, which I don't always get, so that's nice. So I'd like to just see it clear and now. This path you've taken, this stopping of blood or whatever you're planning on doing you're probably going to fail you are without a doubt unprepared unknowing and very much outmatched now I like you hey, mm -hmm. you're a pretty thing and I think 
we'll become good friends. But I just want to state this now. If you've got any questions that need answering, or you're curious about the past, or maybe you just don't seem to understand what's going on to its full potential and you want to know, I'm right here for any conversation you need. So, on that, as you're saying, you know, unprepared, unknowing, outmatched, you, however, seem to be very knowledgeable, quite fairly powerful, and have a good grasp of the situation. You could join us and help us make this a reality. Oh, I don't mind if another flood happens. I try not to get involved in politics. You see, the set of events that Joe Neptia set off were um, tenfold to their master plan. And while I'm not in anyone's particular vicinity of choice, I just get by with what I need and on with my personal preferences. I don't mind that's going to be the way things are. I just need to change my market. To be fair, if I was going to be frank, you basically sound like a pirate. That's what we do. We go where we want, we do what we want, and we adapt to the, the flow of, well, in our case, water. Oh, dearie, I'm so much more than a pirate. Oh, I, I, I don't doubt that. As you said, you've lived multiple lifetimes more than, you know, even our resident elves, I'm sure. But like I said, something like that, you could... Hey, that's a good point. And she looks over at you, Alaris. Are you in that doorway, by the way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's trying to keep out of the way. He's trying to grit, grit his teeth in a corner. He look, she looks over at you and she just goes, And why exactly are you here again? Haven't you lost something? Haven't you been searching for it? Oh, I thought you'd recognise me. Ag. Oh, I'll be frank. What did you do to Roger Reginald? Where is my captain? Oh. I never forget a face. Oh, but Roger just needed to get his priorities straight. So I just made sure that he'd really take the time to think about it. And he loved that bloody ship so much. He made sure he knew what it was like to be so at one with it as he wished to be. What did you do to him? Where is he? Oh, I can, I can show you soon enough. Just after we finish our tea thing. Not leaving here until I see Roger Reginald. Oh no, dearie! No one said anything about you leaving. Ah, uh, Vader sighs. <laughs> uh, why does this happen every single time? That's it. I told you. Like, does this happen to you a lot? You'd be surprised how many times it's happened to us. Oh, so you have some experience then, that's good. Now, just to put this out there, you, I like Captain Vela, and quite happy to give you the tour, maybe we can have a little bit more discussion rather than things getting uncomfortable. You, looking at you, Alazora, I think you and I are more alike than you think. I never contended such a thing. Well, you know, just keep an eye on the horizon, I suppose. You, pointing at you, Alaris, if Roger Reginald is who you're after, then I'm sorry. You're not going anywhere. I mean, 
You killed him, you dumb hag, didn't you? <clears throat> oh, I did tell never me you kill Roger. Roger's not one person you kill. He's just so... <laughs> Gods. I do love that man. But he really does need to sort out his priorities. So hopefully, he's learned his lesson soon. And then he can come back to me. Why would he want to go back to you? Because I'm his best option. So you've imprisoned him in the ship? In the bottle? Oh, no, dearie. I don't waste the bottle on that. No, no, no. Roger's got a, his own special character from me. Oh, the Was he the soul I detected? Oh, you met him? Was he? Sorry, mouth was full. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, no. Biscuits. <laughs> full of biscuits. <laughs> we found his rock. Come on, how I thought. Oh, yeah. I put that there as a little memorabilia for me. Just a little old to it. My hope is that when he finally figures out how to break the curse, I can remove that stone. But until then, he's very much dead in most eyes. Some would call it limbo. Very much caught between worlds and sense. But I, looking at you, Lars, if you wish to speak to him, I absolutely can go talk. But you're probably not going to leave. That's, that's not an option. Yeah. That's not an option. We, we came as together as a crew. I do in very much intend to leave as my crew. Well, that's very sweet. But it seems that this man's eyes are set purely upon meeting his friend again. But his friend is not the same. I wish to cast a spell. <laughs> no, <laughs> Carol. <laughs> Just in terms of the flow, I was always built building it to cast a spell, but when they want to spoil too much of the flow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to cast? Elizora is casting psychic headbutt as she's determined it. Psychic headbutt. <laughs> oh my word! That's, what, what? Which is so, which is psychic lance if you. Oh, I see. Um, Excellent. Can can uh, I'll, I'll click cast. Can um, if well, she counters. It's a technically it's a fourth level spell. I have to cast if that changes it does any not of your plans. Change. It does not change any of my plans. Cool. Can they please make a uh, intelligent saving throw, please? Well, it's like yeah, it's a lance from your forehead. I thought you were just exactly. like I, 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 I thought you were adding flair to it, but it actually comes <laughs> out of your forehead. That's just like <laughs> that. It's hilarious. Oh what's, my word! Uh, what's your fifteen? Is my spell save DC fifteen? From and she has to roll an intelligence saving throw. Okay, so I think it's only fair to say that we should probably roll initiative. Oh, well, it's, you know, we lasted what an hour. Well, I think it was pretty good. It's pretty good. We, you know, for ease, okay. as there's four Ken Shemans and four of you, mm -hmm. I would like you all, I'd like me to go do something. Pick Ken Sheeman to have go on your go, and then I need you all to roll initiative, and then do we, do you do can... we know their abilities. Oh, that's 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 the next fun part. <laughs> When you tell me who you have, I will give you what to do. Oh, sure. Cool. I'll um, I'll take Cormag. You got Elena. Obviously, everyone knows Elena. Argyle, which is like the ninja cowboy. And then you got a uh, Tixbo. I can't remember what her deal was. Halfling, be a uh, halfling male. I think she's. I'll take Tixbo. Who wants Elena? Who wants Argyle? I'll take Elena. I'll play Argyle. Nice. No, as soon as she started talking to Alaris, that was it. I was done. Gone <laughs> already. Yeah. Well, 
Just when we got into this room, we were done. Oh yeah, I mean, there's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was yeah. there was no way we were leaving this hut without a fight. There was just no, there was no way, you know, because I don't know. I honestly, I have no idea how we would have talked it out of it, you know. Um, Get as much information as you can, and then fight. Well, it, it is very interesting that, yeah, what she was saying, but something to make a note of, I guess. It's hard to put it across the. It was a good perspective during the part. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, it. I mean, it. Exp certainly explains why the artifacts are as powerful as they are, right? They. I mean, they, it, it kind of makes sense. They had some kind of divine input. Um. And it also, yeah, makes more sense that we should be destroying them and not necessarily using them. As well, kind of. But yeah. Okay. Uh, Alaris, what's your initiative? Fifteen. With Elena. You've got Elena, okay. Elizora? Yeah. Um, sorry. I rolled, but I didn't actually do the n uh, four. And I have Argyle. Taylor? I got 17, and I've got Cormag. Okay. Now. The Kinshimans, to they need, they relieve... Need, they need Tim's roll. Oh, Tim's roll is... 14, I did not beyond. Oh, oh they did yeah, not yeah. beyond, okay, fine. And, okay. So, the Kenshibans, I have uh, kind of got a very strange different setup now, because I didn't just want to give you extra actions or extra, like, instead of the Kenshibans being NPCs and having their own turn in combat, each one acts as an extension of you. So with each Kenshiman, each of you get 30 temporary hit points, which is them defending you and helping protect you. And each one has an ability that you can use at any time, doesn't take up any of your actions. So it doesn't matter whether you're, it uh, doesn't matter whether you're you, uh, you've cast a spell, if the person can cast a spell, they can do it at the same time. Like, the whole point is they're like an asset to you. Right. So, that's why they go on your go. They either automatically will move with you and be in the same sort of space, helping defend you, helping work with you at the same time, or you can tell them to do other things in particular, but based on their actions. So, Cormag has two specific abilities. One is Defender, in which case you are immune to all damage for one round. Okay. As he will put all his efforts into defending you and stopping you from even getting hit. Nice. How many times can you use these abilities? So these abilities are so you can use one of these two abilities. Once you've used the abilities, there's a recharge. So it's a D6 recharge. Okay, so they're all recharge six. Is it recharge? Is it on a six? Yeah, yeah, on a six. Sorry. Right, so it's recharge six. Okay. On their abilities, if you do not wish to use an ability, they will just roll a generic attack based on the weapon they've got. Mm -hmm. And you can just roll that attack like you would a regular attack. Um, so, first of his abilities, uh, the defender thing, mm -hmm. the second of his abilities is um, commander, and essentially allows you to do the battle maneuvers commander uh, stuff, which means that you can either yourself or any other team member can move their speed without provoking opportunity attacks. Or you can swap places with a number, another team member uh, as long as they're within 60 feet. Okay. Argyle uh, has got Trick Shot. So Trick Shot means that anytime you cast a spell attack or throw a weapon or do a ranged attack of any kind, he will do a Trick Shot with it that will double your damage. Uh, again, recharge. The other thing he can do is distract. So, what that means is essentially, 
uh, you will get advantage on the attack. And again, that'll, that'll have a recharge. Oh, I could have done with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, who are the other two you brought again? Uh, Tixpo and Elena. Right. Elarius has so... an Elena. Okay. Elena is dancing feet. And what that means is uh, you can move without opportunity attacks uh, a full dash. And that's in addition to all your actions and everything else. And uh, then there's. Uh, sorry, what do I call it? Repose. Repose? I don't know if that's the correct term, but anyway. Repose. Anytime you are damaged with an attack have the opportunity to not only negate that damage but revert half of it back at the enemy that's a good one for Elaris. and then Tixbo so Tixbo <laughs> this is quite uh, so back off is one ability and essentially uh, no enemy can get within 15 feet of you for one round. They will be repulsed back. And the other ability is that. Uh, sorry, my notes are an absolute shams. There it is. Um, spinning bow. Helicopter, I put in brackets because obviously a helicopter doesn't exist as well. But spinning bow and uh, spinning bow basically uh, allows you, Tim, to take the jump movement and gain a flying speed of 30 feet for the round. And all of those abilities are a recharge of six. Now, uh, the 30 temporary hit points, when those are spent, uh, I don't want to just kill them outright, because that's ridiculous. Instead, what they're going to do is go into recovery. Okay. So I will be rolling dice in the background of them in recovery, but they will essentially be out of the fight. When we can still stabilize them as usual and stuff. Y yeah, so if you, if you take uh, the opportunity to stabilize them, they'll come back to the fight much faster. But if you don't, I am rolling stuff in the background to define whether or not they come back into the fight. How is healing going to work? So, like, if if Tim uses mass cure wounds, for example, would that that would bring them all back into the fight immediately? Cool. Would we just then regain temporary hit the temp uh, extra temporary hit points? It's basically like a second health pool. So it's not following temporary hit point rules. It's just like a second. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's kind of the it's a second. Uh, every time they come back to the fight, you gain those thirty temporary hit points back. Now this is a mechanic that I'm playing with. Yeah, it's just so, obviously, it's just obviously, yeah because I could stop the temporary hit points. Like if you if we gain temporary hit points from another source, it overrides. But this is like more of a secondary health pool rather than like yeah, strictly temporary hit points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's very true. But that's fine. Cool. So yeah, cool. Maybe separate it off if you can as like a separate pool of HP. But once it's spent, they go into recovery. You can either heal them, stabilize them to bring them back. If you stabilize them, they'll come back and you might gain maybe 10 temporary hit points instead, or 15. If you heal them, you'll get the max 30. If they recover by themselves, you'll they'll come back with the max 30 as well. Mm. That's fine. Okay. Have you all got that written down? Yes. Great. Got it memorized. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent work. <laughs> right, okay. So we start, actually, at the top of the round, which is the layer. Uh, first off, actually, I need to take damage. So, the head Pass, buff. fail. Oh, she passed. So I roll 27 damage, which they take higher. So, third. Yeah. And that's psychic, isn't it? Yes. It's a psychic yes. lance, so. Cool, just double checking. 
if they fi- if they had failed, they would have been incapacitated, which means they wouldn't be able to take actions or reactions. Did you say recharge six or cooldown six? Recharge. Okay. Roll a D6. Yeah. Roll a D6 to get the ability back. While they're in the fight, if you don't use an ability, they do an attack with their dedicated weapon. So for Tick's bow, it's a quarter staff. So roll a D6 and you have to get a six. I have to get a six. Yes. And then you do that every turn. Yeah. If you okay, want to recharge, it. yeah. But cool, you have cool, to take. Cool, cool. Thank you. I think I think you take the action to recharge, don't you? No, it happens at the end of that. No, it just happens. Happens at the end. No, 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 sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's new to me. Oh, okay. So it just recharges every every turn. Don't worry about that. Yeah. And we'll uh, do those rolls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, you know give you these guys for fun. All right. It's very cool. So, at the top of the turn, we have layer actions. So, this entire room becomes somewhat muggy and misty, and she creates a deep cube of water. Oh, just just um, quick, quick um. I just looked online. You, you. It's at the start of that creature's turn. They get to roll recharge. Okay. Not at the end. Go. So I just, I just had to quickly look that up because I wasn't 100 percent sure. Yep. That makes sense. Right. So in that really, you know, grayish square, that is a 15 foot cube of water currently covering all of the Kenshimans. And da, 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 da. so I need all of them for this and it's a DC 16 strength saving throw so essentially roll a d20 then add your proficiency modifiers okay. our characters want just just the proficiency not the based not your specific strength it's just based on your level so I got 21 from me 16 9 9 is what Okay, so Elena and Argyle, you both get pushed back into the wall and then prone. So we're going to lose a d6 for the blood dripping. Yeah, so you lose five temp of that about ten page people. So the water dissipates. Now at the rest of the top around, the rest of you, Vela. I believe is your go. And you were right there. The first thing you see, Vela, is as this happens, and she's knocked back, she sort of throw casts the tea aside, and the tea just the teacup and the saucer just suddenly slow down and very gently set themselves on the side as her form dissipates the flesh of an old lady wrinkles and peels off like ash as her skin turns greyer into then a pale blue. Her white hair fans down and her fingers stretch out an elongated almost completely unnatural way and her teeth show like piranha teeth as her jaw opens wider than it should, revealing a line up to her high cheekbones, and her eyes flare with the colour of a bluey green ocean being reflected on with moonlight. Lovely. We'll do it this way then. Is your go? Yes. Let's. And she'll use her angel thing transform to get her wings out hmm. told you so well uh, and then yeah and she will attack um, and Azor is within five feet as well so yep. I should get my thing yep. she's not concentrating on anything is she yeah, that's fine. 
she didn't cut. She oh no, it's too late now. It's happened. All right, that's fine. I'll let, I will attack. I'm going to attack with the rapier. Um, but I'm going to add the whole bonus to the weapon. So that is a twenty. Twenty-four to hit. Twenty-four to hit. That is a hit. So, so that's eleven. Because it's plus six. Yeah. So that's eleven. It's eleven. It's gonna be a lot of different. It's eleven piercing. Mm -hmm. Three radiant. Which sword is this with? This. Uh, this is with the rapier. Okay. Um. So yeah, so yeah, so sorry. Eleven piercing, because I've added the plus three bonus to the whole weapon rather than claiming over some of it. Uh, three radiant because of the wings, and sneak attack. Which... Oh, sorry, is this the rapier that's magical? Yeah. Okay, cool. The defender. Sorry, the, the, tell... the, sorry yeah, the defender rapier should have been more clear. It's sorry, the you've got. A... Got a lot of swords. I do have a, I do have a lot of swords. Sorry, this is the defend, the defender rapier, the legendary, the legendary weapon. Okay, sorry. Could you tell me the damage again? Eleven piercing. Right, got it. Yeah, and three radiant. I'm trying to find out what my sneak attack damage is. Four d six. I'm just going to roll it in here. Right, and that is sixteen. Uh, extra damage, piercing damage. Uh, from that as well, which I guess would still be magical because it's with that weapon. Mm -hmm. So as you bring the blade in, she kind of puts a hand up to it as it stabs in as a grin, and then you force it through, and she shrieks at it as it stabs through and almost up her arm, and then she brings her hand back. <sighs> Fancy toys. <laughs> of course. We wouldn't come unprepared. Good. Uh, Cormag, well, I'll get Cormag to... I'll use Commander to get... Because uh, it's only one, isn't it? So I'll get Commander to get to, uh, one of the Genshimans out. Because are they, are they still in the box of the water? They've been... So two of them have been... So the box of water came up and basically wave crashed into them. Two of them ended up uh, against the wall and prone, uh, which I think was Argyle and Elena. Right. And then the other two managed to avoid it, and Cormag came up to your side for the battle. Right. Okay. So there's no war. They're not like suspended in war anymore. No. Um, Commander. Then I mean, yeah, she's there. I will use Commander to swap because I can swap any two people, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to swap Oogie woogie. I'm going to swap assuming Ele uh, Elizora is okay with it Is swap Elizora with um, let's say Elena because Elizora is better at range unless okay. Elizora is cool. planning to shift or shape shift or anything like that but she can get over there cool why not so she'll do that she'll use commander to swap those two over Okay, they swap down, so Elaine is in, in place. Yeah, I'll just mark that as orange because it's spent. Okay. Just gonna do a little. Oh, actually, I wonder if. I'm gonna put this here. There you go, that's Elena. <laughs> gonna get these in for every one of them. <laughs> Don't know if you can, like, name tag any of those. Yeah, I'm just seeing if I can. Uh, but they're here. But yeah, and that's 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 her turn because that was bonus and action and special. And I assume she's not. Yeah, we said she's not concentrating on anything, so that's fine. Yeah, no, she's not concentrating on anything. Uh, we can see that we're Elena though, so it is showing up for us. Okay, good. Just working my way through to make sure they're all there. All back next to you. that I spelled Cormac wrong in my notes. I spelled it with the uh, more combat K, you see. I didn't do the C. Uh, okay, okay. It makes, it makes sense. It does make sense. Uh, next, in the turn order, let's try 
uh, not distract you all while I'm doing things. Alaris, what would you like to do? Um. So is the lane? Uh, see, I'll, I'll do my action first. I will. Um, corner. I will, yeah, I'll probably stay where I am. But I will. Um, a dramatic orb. The heck. Dramatic orb. Yeah, well, I'll go for thunder damage, but it's uh, got a lot to hit. It's a spell so, attack, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd, Okay, cool. 24 to hit. Yeah, what level do you pass that? Oh, first. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, that hits. 13 damage. Thunder damage. Let's see how Th she reacts. Did you say 13? 13, yeah. Yeah, it rings in her ears and she twists against it. Okay, but she, she takes the brunt of it. Yeah, she seems to take the brunt of it. What was that? Thunder? Thunder, yep. I feel a little bit outnumbered. She cracks her right arm out, and you hear her bones break as she's twisting her hand into different motions. The spell. This is a spell and you see out of the floor ripping up through the floorboards clambering twisting in form someone who looks very similar to her but is very much missing an eye socket and part of her jaw is fleshed apart and uh, this spectral form appears in front of all of you I need you all to do a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh wait, that 14 was wrong, my bad. Thank god. Do you want us to roll for the consumers as well? Your wisdom saving throw will be fine. Okay. It covers both. Oh dear, that's even worse. Is Elena <laughs> immune? Elena is immune. Right, I've got 22 anyway. Is this a spell that's happening to us right now? It's not really a spell. Okay, that's fine. It's, a, it's an effect. It's an effect. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I, I have an advantage on saving throws against spells cast by creatures within five feet of me, but if it's not a spell, then it doesn't count. That's fine. It's not a spell. I'm trying to make my roll better, because it's not very good. <laughs> but she just says, as, as this apparition rises up, Come, sister. Help me now. Oh, of course. Okay. What'd you get, Baylor? Four. 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 You are frightened. Of the one that just came? Of the one that just appeared, yeah. Okay. And... What did Elis Elisor get? Sixteen. So... Elisor, you look at this fearsome creature, but you steel yourself against it, as do the others. Baylor, you are terrified. You have the frightened condition mm -hmm. on it, and you are very, very uncomfortable with where you currently are. Tim, it is your go. Um, Wait, did Give me one second. Elena to do anything. Oh yes, Lara, what did you want Elena to do? Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, she prone. But she's actually just been teleported nearer the prey, so no. Uh, let's. I can get it through attack. If it just won't really help right now. Um. Yeah. What's her weapon? She's a three claw devil, you know. I imagine it's katana based. Okay, uh, it's actually based on a rapier. Oh, well that better for a form. Hmm. Why roll off my stats? You just you just roll a d20 plus your proficiency bonus generally, and then we work off that. Uh, that's pretty correct. 
got seven. As she comes up with the blade, she, uh, this creature, she brings her hand up and grabs the blade, and just looks, smiles, and throws it back, saying, "You'll have to do better than that, dear." He's Jim. just warming up. What, what, what would you like to do? So I'm going to toot my horn. Um, I don't think we established whether that's an action or a bonus action. It's an action. It's an action! <laughs> Got prepped him. Yeah, I was thinking of just blowing it in her face when um when the headbutt went off, but um okay, yeah, I'll blow it with the the wisdom one. The spells one. Spells one, cool, okay. So um. as you blow the horn and I think we said this last time that the conch is actually formed around the skull of your yes. dead brother yes. so Nigel. as you blow through it the eye sockets um, begin to glow with this low greenish light and his mouth opens and I guess up to you or either I can give it some flare or you can give it some flare uh, you go ahead Okay. so as it opens the jaw cracks open and you hear Wisdom as through this form of an elder turtle, his staff tall, leaning upon it, kind of pours out like a genie. And as he stands beside you, he looks at you, Tim, stamps the staff into the uh, ground. Uh, next to you and almost like the lower part of his spirit just kind of wraps around your torso almost mm -hmm. as like a little link but it's just there hovering around you the staff in front of it hell yeah I can't really do anything else unless anyone has any good ideas for a bonus action I don't know what your bonus action is any bonus action spells uh, it anything? would just be mm, spell it on. only healing word no one's taking any damage right i mean the, the hag has you know if you wanna <laughs> no that's okay arthur i'm just checking uh Can yeah you... i could i could do a spirit shroud but i don't think i want that out yet yeah i was just looking at that but then you're not really are you you're not gonna hit stuff though are you necessarily i'm mostly gonna be casting yeah because i think you say melee. I don't know. When you hit a creature, it just doesn't feel mm. Yeah, because it doesn't specify that it's a melee hit. It just says as long as they're yeah. within 10 feet, you hit them with even yeah, range. Yeah, sure. Why not counts. then? I'll, I'll cast a spirit shroud. I've got enough slots in a third level slot. Go ahead. Do I have to roll anything? No, you don't have to roll anything. It's just like a it's a buff. Um, All right. Though creatures within 10 feet have their speed reduced by 10 feet. Oh. Okay, so where are you casting it? Uh, it's it's around me. It's uh, oh, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's a ten foot aura around me, radiant, necrotic, or cold. What do you think, radiant? Right? We know radiant's okay because she took the ra the radiant damage. Let's use, from, I think. let's use radiant. Just see if I can put an aura. Hopefully, help against the undead. Can. She beckoned into the room. Yeah, I'm thinking of banishing that next turn. Let's with my can. with my beefed up DC. Is that the end of your turn? Yeah. Tixbo. Tixbo. What would you like? Tixbo, Tixbo just to attacks. I don't need him to do anything else. Okay. Uh, roll, uh, roll a d20. Add your proficiency bonus, and that's and then it's a quarter staff damage. D8, I think, isn't it? Four Oof. Is that a one? No. It's a seven plus three. Ten. As the staff comes down, she just grabs it, and you see her her grip kind of cut crushes and splinters the bow staff mm -hmm. and she pushes it back she just looks what multiple warriors you've brought with you was he going for the apparition or her her <coughs> okay okay at the end of your turn tim i don't really like where she is so she turns into water moves through this doorway <laughs> into here yeah i'm gonna say she pushes open the door with her watery 
form rather than slipping through the cracks. I think that's nicer, giving you an open doorway to where she was. But you'll go through the doorway. Where's her uh, sister? Is she, was she, was he... It's still there. Where was she? Where she was. was she here? Yeah, exactly there. Okay. But mm. she'll peer, peer through there just to go... Yeah, I feel like she'd go around the edge. Yeah. Anyway. Back to you, Elizora. What would you like to do? Um, she will... Uh, call it once, call it twice. Elch Blast! Prepare! At the evil one in front of us. The apparition. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead and roll to attack. That's a 21 and a 25. They go through the form. Mm. Interesting. Cool. She'll then, she'll then go and move. She'll go and go and move through into the other room. Is there a power girl then? Yep, you'll see her there. And what would you like Argyle to do? He would have taken half well, his movement. Yeah, but. Um, I'll use my bonus action. Thank you very much. <laughs> skip I'm so sorry. Skipping skip my uh, order of operation. Thank you very much. Um, to summon one of her tentacles of the deep next to old hag it's an ability here. not a spell isn't it it's a bonus action it's an ability yes yes but it's an ability not a spell yeah, yeah. just clarify. yeah it is and then i can make it uh attack her or what do i add melee spell attack so let's see. that's a 23. that is a hit she takes one D8 coal, which is five, and her speed is reduced by ten feet. Except it's not. As the cold reaches for her, she just rubs her shoulders against it as if enjoying the touch. I thought you would have understood by now. We're the same, you and I. Just years apart. Decisions slightly different. Mm. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> we could discuss, but I have a feeling you're trying to kill me. Stalker. her. And, and then Argyle should still be able to reach the, You'll reach, the doorway. Yeah, where you are. To... You could probably go over your shoulder or the shoot or well, whatever you've got with her so just throw an attack uh, throw a dagger oh not 20 good job Argo it's a shame it's a dagger <laughs> every little helps oh, why am I rolling you meant to be rolling roll a d4 I don't know what the weapon they have is uh, that's a two. That's what six. What's the what's the other plus? So... Doesn't matter. What's... As the dagger goes to reach her, being that it's non-magical, she simply catches it between her fingers, looks at the blade, and clatters it to the ground. I thought you said you came prepared. I didn't say that. <laughs> She kind of licks her lips as you say that, and her grin, her sharp piranha-like grin, gets bigger. Okay. Now, my turn. First things first. Yeah. Not even looking at you. She comes up to the wall next to her. And 
it's strange. To you, it looks like an opaque wall, but she seems to look at it very intently. Vela, mm -hmm. you have the frightened condition right now, correct? Mm hmm. Roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. I'm guessing this is not a spell then. Is it a spell? No? This is something else. Uh, okay. Great. Oh my god. Alright. It's a five. You dropped zero hit points. And she looks over at you again, Elizora, and she just says, It looks like your friend can't take the battle. Not the first time. Wow. Okay. She might lose the frightening condition now I'm unconscious. And then she looks like she does something like she clicks her shoulder back clicks the other shoulder back and there's this crystal on her hip and she just takes it up stabs it into her shoulder looks like it rejuvenates her oh no what else can you all do now, Vela, because you're down, Cormag is currently tending to you, what I call it. So, he's out if you're out. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I need a death saving throw, please. Marked it off. Cool. Laris, what would you like to do? Uh, yeah, I could get to that room. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go into the room. You're always pretty blocked. <laughs> you can move past people as long as you can get past them <laughs> and end up in a square. Is she invisible? Sorry, you're a bit glitchy for me. <laughs> Could I even see her through the doorway? You can see Elizora in the doorway, you can't see that. I'll move her token up again because stupid map yeah. thing, but... Um, you can see Elizora is in the doorway, but you can't see the hag from where you are, no. Oh. Okay, yeah, I can't even attack. But as long as you, if you can get past... Yeah, you've got enough movement to get past Elizora and be in a new space. I think. But Elizora, you were in the doorway, so you need to move back down. She wouldn't be further in. No, that's where you left it. Um, but it doesn't matter anyway, because oh, Lara's going to be past you. So, so. so I was going to cast Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave, Thunder cool. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. 15 foot cube, yeah. It originates from you, so you like blast Thunder Wave out. Yeah, I'll just go spell so no one gets hit by it, apart from the hag. Uh, Casting a second level. So that, yeah, the hag needs to run constitution saving throw to beat 15. If any of that came through. Yeah, we got it. Constitution saving throw 15. Is that yep. right? Great. She beats it. Okay, so she takes half of this d8. And for added flare, any unsecured objects within that area are automatically pushed 10 feet away. So, just for the, yeah, with so the room think... we're in now, everything, like, there's, like, stones along the floor, oh, there's dirt and webs and that kind of thing, and that all just, like, the webs tear, the stones scatter, and, like, everything blasting past her, but she just stands forward and takes the full brunt. So, yeah, because of the armor she gets blasted, double distance, but... Sounds like it doesn't affect her anyway. Well, she'll take the thunder damage because she's taken thunder damage before, so it's whatever. The... Yeah, she, so she takes the four, four thunder damage. Oh, okay. Half. Oh, have you already halved that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cheers. And she takes it and she looks forward and she just. Mm. You're next. 
Uh, what would you like Elena to do? Um, I will get her to attack the hag. Okay, so she's got enough distance. Yeah, she's got, she's got enough distance. She runs up to the hag and just does a regular attack, so d20 plus proficiency. 15. 15. Yep. That is back to hit. How much damage? Uh, so it's a rapier. Four. Four. As Elena strikes the piercing blade forward, fainting an attack to the left and then bringing it down on the right, the sword just hits her rib, but it doesn't pierce. The blade bows with impact and then flexes back. Elena kind of steps back a little bit. Oh, dearie, do you think such a regular th thing could even... Should we send them away, considering none of them can do anything? I mean, they've got their abilities, right? I think that's pretty much the only thing we can use them for, because none of their attacks... I'm not going to use my abilities, I'm pretty sure. Oh, okay. I mean, the core mags is actually quite handy, but, but um, not while she's down. But the thing is, if they yeah, if they go away, there's not a lot they can keep them around the corner. I mean, they could grapple her. Mm. Yeah, that's a good idea actually. You know, pin her down, pile on. Yeah, yeah that's a great idea. As long as she's not immune but to the grapple. But we should stop wasting our water. attacks. Definitely. Yeah, there's no yeah, there's no point attacking because none of them have magical weapons. Mm. Um, so. We haven't tested their weapons on the apparition. Well, everything well, passed through it, and we were able to walk past it as well without an opportunity okay. attack. So, so I don't think it's doing much. So, at the end of your go, Polaris, at the end of Elena's attempt, she just looks up and says, I think we should have more fun. And her jaw dislocates, disgorging, and pouring out this swarm of snakes as they leap from her mouth landing on the ground swarming around Elena immediately and encompassing that space Lovely. so as they currently surround yeah they get an attack oh god that's awful that won't hit Elena anyway, so that's fine. So as they swarm around Elena, they go to bite, but she's just batting them off one by one. As she finally finishes, locks the jaw back in place. <sighs> now I feel like it's an even party. Tim, what would you like to do? I'm going to try a whole person on her. Okay, you've got to get within. Oh, I have to get shot. into them. I have to get through to the next room, don't I? Can I bypass these you, people? You, yeah, you can go through people as long as you can end up in a free space. You are okay. currently in front of Elena, who is swarmed by snakes. Um, let me cast it now. So I get a plus three to my save. So I will just cast it in a second level slot. You need to be seventeen. Charisma. 17 Charisma. 17 Charisma. Is um, Baylor still down, by the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got Spell of Dying as a bonus action, so I'll use that on you as well. Nice. That just uh, stabilizes me. I think I'm still on. It does, I'm afraid. What's the spell save DC again? 17 Charisma. Meets it, beats it. Bastard. It's okay, I got more. Well, I'll at least stabilize. Yeah. Um, I can heal you next turn. Yeah, that's the kind of pointless. I'll roll the d4 anyway, but... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But, yeah. But no, at least I'm stabilized. I've got three, three saves now. But still, at technically, at zero HP. Anyway, that's my turn. Um... 
I don't think I want to take Swift to do anything. Okay. Elizora. What would you like to do? Say it won't say it again. Might as well do it twice. But I'll. I might as well use the um, ability and double the damage. Is that what I want? Mm hmm. Oh, trick shot. It. The trick, yeah, the trick shot. The double damage. So that's a 28 and a 15. 28 and a 15. Yeah, so 28, 15. Is the 15 damage doubled? No, that's just to hit. Oh. They both hit. Cool. Um, and then that's a 9. So wait, is it just the dice doubled or just the total number of damage doubled? The total number of damage doubled. Double. Okay. Oh, everything or just one one of those bolts? Uh, mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say all of that because it's one one casting of Eldritch Blast. Okay, cool. So that's a thirteen on one bolt and a nine on the other bolt. So that's a twenty-one. Twenty-two. Is that right? Thirteen 22. plus nine. You say? Yeah. Yeah. So it's twenty-two. 22. That's 44 force damage with a double. So that hits hard. And the way this is done is that uh, Argar throws a dagger and it chings off uh, the wall, aiming directly for her, and she grabs it. But as she does that, she leaves herself completely open, completely vulnerable, as you just bring in these two Eldritch Blasts directly at her no defense uh, in her way whatsoever they just hit her hard and she even like steps back a little bit very good nah, nothing else you can do right now and her turn seems only fair I give you my attention she is going to cast a spell at you Counter spell. If you can hear me, counter spell. Can you hear me? Spell. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. We heard you. She she counter spells your counter spell. Ah. Counter spell her counter spelling your counter spell. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, can you not? No, no, no you I can counter, counter spell her counter spell. Another one. Yeah, another yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Would you like to counter spell her counter spell? Yes, let's pile on. <laughs> Elizora certainly can. You? <laughs> oh my god. Would you, would you like to? Yes. So oh, what a silly game. She brings, yeah, she brings it? it's, up it's her like exploding hands. kittens, right? Really? But then the, the, the thing is, yeah. And she yeah. puts forward this her hand to like, and you see this like static around her fingers as she does it, and then Alaris waving his hand or however you counter spell Alaris, she suddenly flicks her other wrist and tries to counter your counter as <laughs> as Elizora bringing up another uh, symbolic movement to counter that counter and as it all dissipates before her she just looks so, oh wait what spell slot were you doing counter spelling we were Larius yeah uh, it was second Oh, no. no, sorry, third, yeah, yeah. Can you roll a d20 for me and just add? Okay. What do I add? I got 17. What do I add? Oh, you're fine. You're you're fine. It's okay, fine. Okay. That definitely happens, though. It dissipates everything, and as she just stands there, she's just... More interesting than most. All right. Have it your way. And as a bonus action, she grabs another one of these crystals from her belt, <laughs> stabs, seems somewhat rejuvenated, but not quite to full strength. At the top of the round, I forgot to do this last time, she looks at all of you, uh, you before her, and just think, goes, all right. Let us see if one of your types can aid me. 
and again from the ground, clawing through, spectral in nature, not looking like a woman with long hair like her, but instead a captain's hat and a full coat and a blade on this ghost-like spectre, his eyes uh, milky white, rotted flesh barely clinging on to his skull and head as a spectre stands next to her. Help me deal with them. Now, I'm going to do two things. One, poison snakes get their actual go, so they're going to attack Elena. God, and they're rolling like dog shit. Right. Uh, da -da -da. Now it is the Spectre's go. The Spectre goes up to you, Alarius. Especially after that, bringing the counter spell ridiculousness. And that's a 15 to hit. Um, this is 16, 18 now. The armor. Has it? As it comes down to attack you, it repels almost off the pauldron. And as it does, it flings its fingers together and it sort of circles you. Its eyes glow. <sighs> Failure. You're stable? Mm hmm. Roll me a default. So, yeah, okay. That's three three okay so I'm gonna give you an option here so cool mag can be out of the fight for you to go up to 2 HP but out of the fight completely no just out of the fight recovering that's fine yeah I mean it wasn't gonna do much else anyway so yeah I'm happy to do that yeah so you can go up to 2 HP and cool mag is out of the fight for a little bit He sort of picks you up and shakes you off. But then in doing so, he's had to put down his sword and shield to the side and then he needs to go get it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, yeah, so much she can do when she's up. She oh, Tim's not even here. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, she will sort of st start heading out then uh, yeah as long as you can make it into the base into a free square you can move between allies yeah she'll stand over here for now she's still a bit worse aware at the moment uh, she's got her action and everything hasn't she yeah there's not a lot she can do what she'll do for the moment. Well, actually, just looking at the time, have a think about it, and continue with your go beginning of next week. Because what will happen to our dear pirates? This cruel hag, seemingly some tricks up her sleeve. Will they survive? Or perhaps they'll come out victorious, but what secrets does she know? What lies could she have told? Or truths that were never known? Find out next time on Pirate Adventures. <laughs>